Revolutionary, just one thing, a new video technology is being called the Topanga Film Festival, featuring something called Mind Play. It is the world's first video and movie platform that is controlled by your mind. So fascinating. Now, if it sounds mind boggling, maybe because it is, we welcome today Dr. Robert Builder and LG Taylor from the festival. You're going to walk us through how this works. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good. So basically, um, it's being held at the Topanga Canyon Art Gallery in a portable screening booth. And you go in, you put on a medical grade. EEG headset and it detects your brain waves as you watch the movie so depending upon your mental brain state you're going to be able to unfold the plot and also determine the outcome of the movie so if you and I were going to watch the same movie on a different television we might actually have a completely different story that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it, it's well. He's it is amazing because basically he's broken all rules of linear storytelling, and you're actually as the as a viewer now you're part of the story, which is really incredible. And I and I really think that that's that's the trend where storytelling is going. And Dr. Builder, this uh, people are so fascinated by the mind now. We're we're all beginning to understand how the brain works, and there's a lot of technology about this. Oh, absolutely. The um, the technology to be able to read our minds is developing. Pretty Pretty rapidly now that we're able to uh, take images of the brain and then begin to understand exactly what those brain states are telling us. And that's why the differences between your two brain states will make the difference in the ending of these movies and someday in the creation of entire movies. How accurate is this device? Well, first of all, what is the device and, and how accurate is it? Uh, it's, a, well, it's a medical grade. It's an EEG headset. It's, made, it's designed by NeuroSky, which is a company in Silicon Valley. It's and like they a actually, full skull cap or it, Well, there's, there's a headset and there's actually now a headband. So that the headband is designed so that you sort of forget that it's even on your head. So Because they're, they're, they, were, they were concerned that maybe if you're wearing the headset, it might actually dictate, you know, change the way your brain state is. Um, but these guys, NeuroSky, they actually make the chips for uh, many of the neuromarketing companies out there, the computer chip inside the headset. Now, you mentioned neuromarketing. Hollywood's already using this technology, yeah, aren't they? they? Are. How does yeah. that work? Well, they're not. It's interesting, though. They're using it, but they're not necessarily really advertising so much about it. And I think because there is a little bit of controversy, people, some people find, you know, is this a little invasive? What are you trying to do? Get inside our minds. Um, but yeah, they are using it. They're, it's, it's becoming a big, big biz business right now. So Dr. Builder, are, are, the, are our thoughts and moods that much different that can actually be detected by external equipment? They are. Um, the, the big uh, trick there is trying to figure out how they're the same and how they're different. Uh, in a reliable way. I think that the question you were asking earlier is how accurate are these things? So far, there's a, a good ability to get at major brain states so we can tell the difference between whether somebody likes a product or whether somebody loves a product. And increasingly, we can tell whether they're actually going to purchase a product based on their brain state. But can we actually read their minds and tell exactly what they're thinking? Can I tell if you're thinking about your dog or can I tell <laughs> if you're thinking about something else? No, not yet. Um, but increasingly, we're going to uh, be acquiring these capabilities. That's amazing. Ironically, he is thinking about it. I am thinking about it. So I could tell that. <laughs> so where are we going with this technology? Yeah. What's what's the next step as far as marketing and, and films and well, things like that? The dog that? example. I mean. That's right. Knowing that you could walk your dog just by using your brain waves. That would be one funny example. But I think that increasingly our understanding of the brain is leading us to new technologies where we're going to be able to manipulate our own brains and preferably for good instead of for evil. If we can begin to understand how we can use our knowledge of brain science to be able to change our brains for the better, um, this will be fantastic. I mean, at UCLA, we started a new program which we're calling Bruin Brains, um, which <laughs> is aiming to help students take what we know about brain science and then use it to modify their own brains. And this is the kind of work we're engaged in every day at the Tenenbaum Center for the Biology of Creativity. You know, this is the kind of thing you would see normally, or think of at a film festival. Right, but in Topanga, we do things differently. <laughs> <laughs> but we I'm like, wondering if it's going to be commonplace someday. I think now it will. I do. And, but we encourage that. You know, we have, we're a boutique film festival, so we have a, you know, we're somewhat limited with our structure, and we encourage other film festivals to explore the neuroscience of film. And, and people are excited, the, the community at large and, and neuroscientists. I have writing me from all over the world excited about this collaboration between art and science.
And Dr. Bilder mentioned that it could be used to find out how people think about products and whether they'll buy it or not. And that's how Hollywood is using this technology already, right? Yes. They're, they're tracking to see how audiences will respond to certain parts of movies. Yes, yeah, well, and, and which essentially is going to change the way stories are told because they're going to have they have these focus groups wearing these headsets, and if they're responding a certain way. They're going to make the writer rewrite the scene so that they can make their box office sales. Who did the film here? Who, who, who has the premise? Uh, for the Trey film? Azam. He is the guy behind Mind Play. Yes. And is it? Uh, do we all begin? Do we all start out seeing the same film? Yeah, yeah, but it's one at a time right now. It's not developed for movie theaters, so they're short films. You do it one at a time, where you watch the film, and again at separate times. Yes. The but the great part is, is the, re <laughs> the, the the replay value of this film. Is, is tremendous. You can watch the same film five, ten times, and each time a different story. So the right. replay value in terms of dollar and box office, that's terrific for, for box yeah. office numbers. That's yeah. amazing. Fascinating um, stuff. Thank you so much. For more information on Mind Play and, of course, the Topanga Film Festival, just check out our website. It's kcal9.com. Click Scene on TV. This is all fascinating. Good luck with the film festival. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks Thank for you. Thanks, Thanks for being here.